As human beings, we struggle to make sense of our world and how we fit into it. And, um, and we come up with some ideas and some theories, some of which uh, remain and uh, are consistent, and some of which are, after a period of time, we find out aren't really true. Uh, Donna reminded me of one. There was a point in time in which uh, we believed, as a human species, that the sun circled around the Earth, because that's what we kind of observed. That's what seemed to make sense. And it wasn't until uh, later in the history of humanity that we realized it wasn't that the sun was circling around the Earth, the Earth was the center of, of our universe, but rather it was the Earth circling around the sun. And people resisted that reality for a pretty long time, some pretty strenuously. But that's, that's the nature of humanity. We, we try to make sense of what is happening around us, and we apply theories that, that have a certain logic to them. One of, the, one of the really great areas that humanity has wrestled with is what happens when people die. And uh, certainly for a long time, the perception was that when people die, that's it. Because all the evidence pointed to that reality. You didn't see somebody anymore. You didn't hear from them. If you were so inclined, you saw that their body eventually deteriorated. Um, so it, it, it seemed as if physical death meant the end of all life. Fortunately, um, there have been other thoughts about that, and, and Jesus came into the world to help us understand that death is not the final word, that there is resurrection, that new life awaits all people. Um, but that was something that took some thinking to, uh, and, and some work for people to come to believe and understand. Connected to this whole idea of death being the final, the final call uh, was this reason as to why some people died and some people didn't. And if death was indeed the final, the final word, then when people died, and particularly when people died tragically, there had to be some reason that this happened. And so a whole way of thinking kind of emerged that well, if you died, and you died tragically, then you must have deserved it, right? You know, that's the only reason why someone would die a tragic death. They did something to deserve it. And even if that wasn't clear, we thought, well, there must have been something, they must have really been nasty people in ways we didn't know. Or, or, or maybe they, they just did all these things that were beyond our vision, but they were really, they had to be nasty people if they died a tragic death or if they died too young. Jesus comes into the world and teaches us and he lives his life in such a way as to try to correct some of the misconceptions that we have about life and some of the, particularly some of the most important misperceptions that we have about life. And in our third scripture passage this morning, that's the work that he's doing. And so I'd ask if you would, to please listen for the word of God as it's found in the gospel according to Luke, reading from the 13th chapter, verses one through nine. At that very time, there were, some pit, there were some people present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders 
than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will perish just as they did. Then Jesus told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on the fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? The gardener replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. May God bless this reading from Holy Scripture. So when we hear parables, uh, what we're asked as listeners to do is to try to imagine who the different characters are in the parable. And in, in this parable, it, it seems as if it would be fair to say that um, the, the owner of the land is God. And so God comes and is looking around God's property and, he, and God finds this tree that's not bearing any fruit. And, and God says to the gardener, um, you know what? Nothing, years and years, nothing. Just cut it down. It's taking up space. Plant something else in there. And the gardener, who I think it's fair for us to say is, uh, is Jesus, says, you know what? Tell you what. Give the tree one more chance. Let me, let me dig around the roots, kind of turn the soil over, and let me put a bunch of manure on it, because manure helps things grow, and let's see. And if it bears fruit next year, all the good. And if it doesn't, then we'll cut it down. Then. So we have this image of Jesus as a gardener and what he has to do in order to help people or help things, translated as people, bear fruit, is to dig some stuff up, turn some stuff up and throw some dirty, smelly manure on it. And the reality is that when Jesus does that, people don't really like it. Because who likes to have dirty, smelly manure on them? All right? Okay. What Jesus is responding to when the people ask him these questions about the, the people who died, the Galileans who died, and then the people in Jerusalem who died, those folks are saying, uh, you know, they must have deserved it, right? The, the people that Pilate murdered and then took their blood and mixed it in with their sacrifice, the sacrifice that they were making in the, uh, in the temple or in the synagogue, they must have done something really hard to deserve to die like Right, Jesus? And, and the people that were killed by that tower that fell over, they, that, they just must have really been horrible folks to die like that. And Jesus says, no. That's not how it works. That's not true. Those Galileans are, are no different than you and I. Same folks. Yeah, make mistakes, not make mistakes, but no worse sinners, no worse... Uh, no worse people than we are. It, you know, these things happen. And why do they happen? Because tyrants like Pilate, who want to intimidate the Jewish people, think that it's fine to just kill folks. And in fact, they think it's fine not only to kill them, but to intimidate them even more, to take their blood and mix it in with their sacrifices because then says the pilot doesn't care about their God at all. That's why those people died in the way that they did. They weren't any worse sinners than you and I. And the, the tower falls, but we don't know. Maybe somebody cut some corners when they were building the tower. Maybe they didn't strengthen it the way they should have. And when the wind blows, 
The badly built tower falls and it kills 18 people. It's not, they weren't any worse than any of the other people in Jerusalem. They just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. It's, yeah, it's a tragedy, but they're no, they were no worse than we are. The cause of, you know, the reason this happened doesn't have anything to do with people being good or bad or deserving to die like that. And as people of faith, we need to repent, turn back to God, and find out what's another way for us to look at this. How can we change our perception, change our thinking, so that we don't look at people who die tragic deaths and think they somehow deserve it? Because what was true for those people then continues to be true for us today. We still want that sort of cause and effect. We want to still believe that there's some sort of absolute justice in the world so that if you die or you die early, you deserve it somehow. You know? You're really just a rotten person. Maybe nobody could see it. Or you did this or that, and therefore you deserve to die. And Jesus is saying, no, that's not how the world works. Sometimes it is, you know, sometimes people just do really stupid things or horrible things. And when they're killed, they deserve it. But there's a whole lot of people who die that don't deserve it. And when we as a people kind of continue to hold on to this idea, this concept, it begins to cause problems. We don't, we don't look at life honestly. We don't attend to life, honestly. Jesus is willing to come into the world and dig up the soil around us and even put manure on it to help us grow, to help us bear fruit. And, and just as those folks that were asking him the question needed him to do that for them, we need Jesus to do that for us today. And he's, and he's trying, and he's trying in a whole lot of different ways. And, and Jesus, we believe, works through people now, right? We try to have Jesus work through us as, as individuals and as the body of Christ at work here in Mechanicsburg. And Jesus works through a lot of other different people who do and say things trying to bring a, a new understandings into the world, new ways of thinking into the world. So maybe we can change some of our misconceptions that have negatively influenced how we have lived life and how others have ended up experiencing life. During this season of Lent, we are, we're uh, working with two different books that deal with the idea of racism and its prevalence in our culture and society and ask the question as to, you know, what can we do about that? And, and where we need to start is beginning to understand that we all struggle with racism, that it's a long-standing problem. It has been a part of our country since its beginning, and in fact, we imported it when people from Europe and other places came to these shores and set up camp, they brought their racism along as they brought slaves into this country, as they uh, believed that it was okay to look at people with black skin as less than human and to treat them that way. That's... It's so deeply embedded with who, who we are and what we believe that we don't even realize sometimes that that's what we believe and how we act. We don't even see it. We don't even recognize it. But people have brought it up. They have stirred up the ground or they tried to stir up the ground. They've tried to put some manure on it and, and, and folks have said, no, nah, I don't want this. I, it, it's too hard. It smells. It's nasty. But we've needed to hear it. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, various writers, 
the Black Lives, Ma Black Lives Matter movement. Yeah. That's Jesus working through people, stirring up soil, and it might not feel good, it might not smell good, but darn it, if we're going to be fruitful people, we need to hear it. Are those people perfect? No. Not a single one, but none of us are. But what they're pointing to is a reality of a misconception that has negatively influenced us since the beginning of our country. And if we aren't stirred, if we don't hear this, if we don't sit with this for a little bit, we will not bear fruit. We will not be the people God created us to be in the ways God created us to be. We will not look at all people equally. We will not love all people equally. We will not treat all people equally. We will not reach out to those who need in an equal manner because of our misconception that somehow people with dark skin don't deserve to be treated equally. And that all the horrible things that happen to them, well, they just deserve it. The percentages of African American men and women who are undereducated, the percentages of African American women who are in prison, the percentage of African American men and women who are shot and killed are much, much higher percentages than the percentage of African American people in our country. It's all out of whack. And there are lots of reasons for that. But the fundamental reason behind it is our misconception, it's our ongoing misconception that black people are not worth taking care of. We all suffer from that misconception. And until we are willing to own that, things will not get better. The same stuff will just keep happening. We'll point fingers and blame different people. Oh, it's the educator's fault. Oh, it's the law enforcement people's fault. Oh, it's uh, the whoever, the judges and the jury's fault. The fault lies when we do not we're not willing to look back at how, how we look at the world and see if that's appropriate, see if that's true. And in order to change, we do, we have got to sit in the midst of some really dark, nasty stuff. Looking back at a history, looking back at our history as a country and seeing how we have mistreated people Man, that's not pleasant. Who wants to do that? None of us do, right? And, and we want to say, well, look, it's not really my responsibility. I don't do, I, you know, I, I treat everybody equally. I, 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 I. Uh, yeah, good, I'm glad, I'm glad that we hopefully can say that, but the reality is that we live in a country that has done that. And the reason why there are places in our country where children are not educated, they, the money isn't there, the, the, the interest isn't there. There are reasons why there are so many more people in prison with dark skins. There are reasons why so many, that has nothing to do with the fact that they deserve it, but everything to do with how we have perceived a whole race of people. If we want to be the people God created us to be, if we want to, which is what we're saying when we show up at church on Sunday, if we want to be the people God created us to be, then we have got to be able, we have got to be willing to allow ourselves to become fruitful in the way of working to change this evil. It will not be pleasant. It'll be hard. 
We're going to have a lot of disagreements. People are going to be arguing back and forth. People are going to be shrugging their shoulders. People will be saying, I don't want to hear this. But that's a part of growth. That's a part of how things change. And if we believe that this is what Jesus is working towards, if the gardeners at work in our country at this time and place, then we need to say yes to this and let, our, let the soil around our legs be dug up and the manure placed on it. I pray that we're up for it. 